saving that for, for uh, the gym. So, hi, we are uh, Magnus. Uh, our three liner for our game is Soccer in Space. Uh, as you noticed, uh, the game that we just showcased to you uh, actually was a build that we released, or we uh, built out two weeks ago. Uh, so our game has uh, slightly changed. Uh, the reason why we had to build out our build two weeks in advance of midterm is because many of us are also on the undergraduate uh, team course, and many of the undergraduate teams are crunching at this time, meaning that we couldn't crunch for two projects at the same time. So uh, basically, what is Mag Magnus? Magnus is soccer. Um, we've taken a lot of inspiration from Rocket League, uh, but at the same time, we're trying to find, like, how can we make our game a little more unique from Rocket League? Uh, and so as you can see, like, we built a pretty similar uh, feel uh, for midterm as Rocket League, but uh, going after midterm, we're going to talk about some of the things that we're going to uh, try to build to make our game a little bit different. Uh, before we do that, we're going to talk about some of our technical aspects, uh, and Matt is here, our lead engineer, to talk about that. Yeah, so I guess first and foremost, we have um, one of the biggest things that we've been able to accomplish this year are re-implementing on Reels kind of online subsystem, which handles matchmaking, um, account login, things like that. So we have our own implementation of that. Um, we have a website, like most of us, and we now have the possibility <laughs> so we have the ability from in-game to log in to our accounts that are on the web server. Um, this is really useful because as you saw, maybe saw when we were playing, all of us just have random names that we were setting in-game. Um, but now if I go into a match, um, as we'll see that I'm doing here, uh, my login name is actually right there. So that's re something really big that we've been working on for the past couple weeks. Uh, the next thing is we are able to, uh, a dedicated server can, when it launches, um, register itself with our web server so that other clients will be able to connect with a dedicated server. Um, this is just an editor build, but as you see here, I just created the session. Um, that session exists uh, in the database in our web server. So if I log into our website, um, I can go to the admin panel and that's the server that I just uh, had set up. And we can delete that from the web server. And if I go back to the game, um, that will no longer, that session is now gone. Um, we spent a lot of time doing this. Um, the reasoning behind it is that we hope to have all these interfaces and stuff implemented so that possibly next semester we can drop in the Steam implementation of this. Um, and it will be much less work for us to have to um, transition to Steam in the future. Um, because we won't have to re-implement any custom code. Um, we'll just be dropping their module in instead of ours to the back end, and uh, it should just work beautifully. Um, the next thing, Derek is our build engineer, so he can talk to you a little bit about um, our build process and how we got one that work. Yeah, so with our game, we do a lot of play tests. We play, we play tests every week, and the point of the build server was to make build for our games, run scripts that makes builds, and allow us to efficiently play test our game. And the way that I set it up is, originally we wanted to use Jenkins and for continuous integration, but that didn't really work out too well with the uh, version control that we're using currently. Um, it's still good for continuous delivery because I set up a script that can basically run Unreal's build tool, run Unreal's automation tool that will make uh, packaged builds for our games and then push them to our Perforce repo. So all we have to do is run the script and the script will call these other scripts Unreal scripts and basically make a build for us, push it to Perforce and what everyone has to only do is go to Perforce then pull the build, and then we just run the executable and we can just play. So we're basically streamlining the playtesting phase of our, of our team. But yeah. Okay. So a little bit about um, what we plan on for the future past midterm. Uh, we actually are going to be switching over our game. As you saw, that it was directly um, related to being on the ground playing soccer. We're actually going to switch to flying. 
because we're in space, zero gravity makes kind of sense. Uh, here is a prototype version. Well, it's a little bit past prototype, um, but this is what our flying looks like. Uh, it is not actually integrated with everybody being able to play at this time. We'll be doing that tomorrow, actually. Um, but you can see how our flying works. And this is also some of our new artwork, that uh, uh, new art direction that we'll be going for. It gives it kind of a Tron feeling, where things are, uh, all objects are somewhat outlined with a glowy uh, texture. And uh, so we have a little bit of flying. We're going to try to play flying, uh, flying soccer. And to talk to you a little bit more about that is Alex here, our lead designer. Hey everybody. So this is our future uh, design direction that we'll be working on for like the next six, or six weeks or so. Really our challenges right now are getting flying to feel very good. Uh, designing flying mechanic with the engineers, we've sort of taken a lot of inspiration from a game called Strike Suit Zero. And so that's how you see flying being implemented right now, kind of like WASDI movement, shift in space over verticality. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we've been finding with like just flying in general is how when you have a three-dimensional space and now you have to like look in all the directions as opposed to always knowing where the ball will go due to gravity, the camera moves a lot and it's very dizzy for players. And it's also kind of unintuitive on how you like turn your character sometimes because we are doing a very physics-based sort of like space simulation of the uh, flight. Uh, as opposed to like, if you turn, you instantly face the direction like most games do. Um, so we're still iterating on that, but potentially we will also be incorporating more uh, shooter elements in the future due to the fact that having agency over the direction of the ball and like how to do like a really cool bank shot or really well aimed shot is very difficult with the current control scheme and just ramming the ball in a 3D space doesn't necessarily afford the player a lot of options unless we heavy handedly give them like some sort of mechanic to uh, change their orientation or change their direction and put very quickly. Uh, and so we already have an item system in our game as you probably saw when we were playtesting earlier just now. We have rockets and meteors and the design space for the items are, can go infinite, right? We can have gravity balls or things like that that can all attract in a thematic way with this new arena and this new and so in future six weeks, we'll be moving towards that direction. And we'll really be trying to nail down flying, making it feel good, and then trying to figure out do we want more shooter elements, do we want to incorporate more combat elements because of the shooter elements, and things like that. But ultimately, we're still definitely going to have some sort of ball, some sort of goal, and people just trying to do an objective, score the ball, plus also you know, perhaps fighting players or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about kind of our future direction. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about art style, and um, and maybe even actually let's, we'll go on to the website to take a look at the art style. Uh, so our website is magnusarena.com. Uh, the home page is the video that you saw, of, or basically a video of our intern build. Uh, we will be switching it over to flying eventually. Um, we have a login screen where you're able to log in, uh, whether you are a uh, user that can sign up. Uh, here, or an administrator. Administrators have the power, as Matt said before, to be able to delete or create servers. Um, we also have a Teams page here, where we have uh, temporary art for people who have not submitted their pictures. Um, <laughs> but you can hover, hover over and click on, or you can click on um, each individual person and their description below. We'll be able to you know, see what, who they are and kind of what, what they do on the team. Um, we also have a gallery. Uh, the gallery is built uh, in 3D uh, and is ex exported as an FBX and uploaded to Sketchfab. Sketchfab allows you to actually go around and be able to. <coughs> see if I can do this. Uh oh. Okay. Well, um, it normally is able to allow you to uh, control where you go on the screen, but seems to be lagging. Oh, okay, it's the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Sketchfab allows us to basically, uh, if you guys go on this website, you can check out all the models in detail. You can scroll in and out. You can rotate around them. You can see what our field actually looks like, some of the artwork that we have. Um, our artwork <coughs> is very blocky, minimalistic style. Uh, and we do a lot of our uh, art, instead of using normal maps and bump maps uh, traditionally, we use extrusions. Everything is built out of actual polygons. Uh, it helps um, 
it, it helps keep the style of the art very consistent if we stick with only extrusions uh, rather than having some things do normal maps and bump maps and textures as opposed to others. Most of our detail is done via shaders in Unreal, uh, meaning that any metallic feel, any light uh, bouncing off of the, uh, any glow effects as well, they're all done with shaders. Uh, and that's how generally we're approaching the art style for uh, this, this iteration. Um, yeah. Basically, we're Magnus. Uh, most of you guys haven't seen us around because we meet on Fridays, because we can't meet on Thursdays, since we have overlapping classes on Thursdays. So, but yeah, uh, any questions? Yes? You were talking about your methodology for updating uh, test builds. I was wondering, are you going to be using the same technology for pushing builds out um, whenever you have an update? Are, are end users going to have the same benefit? We believe so. So um, we've been testing, uh, Derek and I have been testing uh, Unreal's build system, and they have a built-in uh, system for creating patches um, and creating like release builds. So if we release 1.0 and then we created 1.0.1, it can create a diff and all of that for us. So hopefully we'll be able to write some scripts, scripts to automate that and upload those builds to, say, our web server or something um, in the future. But, We've only done some kind of exploration for that for now. Nice. Uh, additionally, uh, people who are also using our build script may want to see us uh, probably tomorrow or so. We found an error in the build script. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you updated in 4.9.2, Unreal has changed all the command parameters to your build tool. So it, your build will not work. Hey, hey, don't update if you're using our build script. <laughs> <laughs> just, just letting you know. Yeah. Or from six. Uh, any other questions? Now you know who we are. <laughs> <laughs> the room is generally empty on Thursday, so when you go up there, you have nobody's there. It's not like we're not working, it's just <laughs> getting you there at the time. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.